you doing? I'm Mike Gaddy and welcome to the 743 Patterson Park Podcast. For this episode, I got to sit down with my brother from another mother, Aaron Hill, and his mom, Cheryl Lawson. Let's start with Cheryl. Cheryl was a school teacher for 29 years, and one day during the pandemic, she realized there's a storm and people need to reboot. She decided to reboot. She gathered up her stuff, went out into the park, started drawing and painting and coloring, and kids started to surround her and were amazed by what she was doing. She discovered her creativity right there in the middle of the park surrounded by those kids. Her son Aaron has been a musician for a long time. This year during the pandemic in order to reboot, he decided to bring his piano out into the park and onto street corners, into driveways and into small towns and bring his music directly to the community. We talk about creativity. We talk about Black Lives Matter and how it's affected the black art movement. We talk about the squeegee boys standing on the corner trying to make a buck. This is a far ranging discussion and it's one that both Cheryl and Aaron brought joy and passion to and it just really lit a fire for me and I hope it does for you. Take a listen. The pandemic yeah. has allowed us to reboot. It has allowed us to reboot. It's allowed us to find ourselves in new ways. It's allowed us to address uh, certain parts of ourselves that's been right there all along but now we have the time and no excuses to do it. And it's allowed for our creative juices to come out because in order to respond to change, you have to naturally be creative. And that creative can mean anything from if there's a detour on the road, then you get creative and you start taking a new path. If there's a detour during, you know, one of the toughest time, the toughest time in my human history personally, um, as well as others that are living here today, then it comes in the form of taking your music and your art out to the streets and for coloring and finding a new way to do things to occupy your time. You so know? let me interrupt you one second because Cheryl, you in particular have taken your art directly out into the streets. And in your case, setting up in the middle of Patterson Park, just putting your artwork out there and saying, oh, come look at this. And people have responded well to you sitting right there in the park, right? Yes, pretty much. First of all, this was a truly out of the box kind of thing. And I'm talking to myself as I started. I didn't start there at Patterson Park. I started at Lake Montebello. And I felt really weird and felt like like people would say, well, she's putting out that she's showing off that kind of thing, because that is not in my rim. Maybe so they say I, the same I, thing about me. <laughs> Yeah, it was like really creepy for me because it's like, oh my God, I could put it down, but I don't want to turn around and go sit in my chair because I don't want all the eyes looking at me. <laughs> so it's just, it was just a weird, cringy feeling for me. So it, I had to do that numerous of times to finally calm down with it. But to me, it's like, oh no, people are looking. Are they looking? I'm talking to myself. <laughs> These are all of voices in my head yeah they look at oh my god and then when i turn around when people are walking especially walking around and they begin to veer off and come in that direction like oh my god here it come here it come so, <laughs> <laughs> i feel the same so, way when i'm shooting when i'm photographing oh my <laughs> god they're actually coming over because you spend all this time planning and planning and planning and planning um but you said the kids seem to, to really respond well to your artwork why do you think that is well, first of all, I've been a teacher for 20, I mean, 36. Prior to that, seven years as a children's assistant in the classroom. So I've been around children um, in large numbers since uh, I came out of school in 69. So the children are the true critics. And so when the children are impacted and when children are in our coming over to the artwork is it's an honor. I mean, you are here adults and we know sometimes adults will say what you want to hear, but children are straight up. Mm -hmm. And when they start gravitating towards the artwork because they like drawing and all of that. So when they are in awe and say, you did all this? <laughs> and I would tell them, yeah, I, yeah, I did all this, wow. 
and they'll say, some of them will say, well, I can draw too. I said, that's, well, that's wonderful. You keep it up. They said, no, but I can't draw like this. That's all right. <laughs> it makes practice make perfect. You just keep it going. Oh, I like this one over here. And I like, I mean, it's just like, oh my God. So it helped me to come to reality. Okay, I have something here. Because like I said, adults, yeah, they're mm -hmm, whatever, mm -hmm, whatever. But the children, straight out the gate and let you know where you are. So that helped me to calm down a little bit more. So it, it's been a process of accepting and realizing that, hey, I must have something here. So, so Aaron, what was it like growing up with a teacher for a mom? And did you were you ever in her class or did they not allow that? So I wasn't I wasn't in her class, but I definitely started off in her school. In fact, I was on the other floor, which meant that I had an extra layer of do not do anything wrong because mama is right <laughs> now stairs. <laughs> and so when he came in 82 and the first, you know, four or five years prior to school, I had it set and locked in. So, Aaron, you said about your mom, quote, we've been making some real legacy together. This was yesterday when we talked. W what do you mean by that? Well, by legacy, I mean, we've been able to take our gifts and take our inclinations that just come naturally to us. And we've been able to take them out to the streets to share them with others. Um, I want to actually even back it up or, or hinge it on what birthed this, which as my mother said, and now that I realized the preparation before I got here, that was a new piece of information that I didn't know, even though I knew about her education and her life as an educator. But when I show up, I'm immediately into a world where around my house, everything has a label on it, has a name on it. There are books everywhere. My, my cousins and some of my other relatives, their memory of me being in the car was riding in the back seat with two stacks of books hired in my head on each side where I was the only kid that didn't want to, I didn't even think it was a privilege to sit in the front seat because I was so used to the back seat in this whole world of this, you know? And so I'm learning and growing. And for me, as you know, when you work with children that way, they never know that they're learning. They just, this is just life for them. So that exposure grew me into a person who naturally education is valuable to me. I get into music. I'm really good at math. And that brings me to this place where now I've taken myself and my career. And in responding to this time, I've taken my music out to the streets. And my mother in particular, as she found her way out into the streets. Right. We both, we both, you know, team up together. And now we're partners. And as my mother would say from one of these old shows that we used to watch, and we're still together. <laughs> when um, we started going different places, not all the places, but when he's outside, he'd call me or he'd text me and say, I'm going to be at so-and-so outside doing, uh, doing my music. So he said, you can come if you want. So as he does he videos it and get different responses and one of the girls at my church said oh i see you and aaron having your own artscape i said that's right and my <laughs> grandbaby she dances we're gonna try to get her here so she can do the dance part i'll do the art and aaron do the music so <laughs> and it was so hilarious when she said that i said yeah that's right that's what we're doing since they're not having the artscape we're gonna have our own it's yeah. just watered down that's all <laughs> so Aaron, you went out into the streets doing it. What, yeah. what exactly do you mean by that? Did pop okay. a hand out on the corner? What? Nope. Here's what happened. Um, and I started this four years ago, uh, which was an outside series called Spur of the Moment, where I would take my piano out to places in nature and just play and offer my gift to the community. I did every year except for last year. And this year I plan to bring it back. This was pre-COVID. By the time March hit, I saw twice the need for it. So I rebranded it as Street Serenades and I put together the business plan on paper between March and April and May 29th, I hit the streets and did my first Street Serenade out in Ellicott City where I took my piano out and I played and the community loved it. And from that point, I did them for about four to five times a week ever since. And this, as of this past Sunday, we just reached 110 of these experiences in the outside area. So since... Let me, let me just make sure I understand this. Since March, yes. you've gone out into different communities around the area. 
Yeah. With your piano? piano? Yes, with my piano. With your piano, set up outside, yes. and done a pop-up concert so done that a- people could be exposed to what, what you – to music. Yes, everywhere from the parks to sidewalks to driveways to street corners, yes. Meanwhile, your mom is in the parks drawing and doing these uh, mixed media and saying, oh, come, kids, look at this. Yes, yes. (laughs) Okay, that's why you guys remind me of my mom and I. (laughs) (laughs) And then if I... (laughs) And then if I can just tell this real in a connected way, then we get together and we meet up and we uh, first uh, camp out at uh, what it was. It was Wyman Park, right, Mom? Wasn't that the first one where we? Yep. So we connected at Wyman Park and we're outside. My mother brings her art. I bring my piano. And at that point, I know exactly what this is. And we start to make history together. We start to make legacy together. Just being two people, that's just positive one uh a, a the apple falling close to the tree from the other and we're going out sharing that goodness with everyone so that was the first one and ever since then it's been just nothing but good times bringing good smiles to people's faces okay so i want to touch on that point because i think it's really an amazing part of both of your stories which is you both independently of when i talk to you independently without any collaboration describe yourselves as total optimists mm. and Cheryl and Aaron, tell me both of you how that has affected not only your art, but just getting through this pandemic in general, because I think I think right now it's hard for a lot of people to describe themselves as being an optimist because there's so much trouble. I mean, you turn on the TV and you see. I I like I said, with me, um, my faith helps me to hang on and being fed, you know, the word and reading the word. And you hold on, like I said, to positive things. And God is the creator. So, you know, I've been with him, latched on to him years, not just all of a sudden. So in a time of crisis, you have that uh, to hold on to. And it helps you. Yes, it's a travesty losing these lives. But inside, you can still see the gems that people are finding themselves. And like I said, being rebooted and finding different ways to approach things. And it also has given every one of us an opportunity to reevaluate what's important and what's not. And the most important thing, life, health, and strength, and family your list has been reduced because we can't go out and do all the things. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. No, there have been boundaries and restrictions. So you reevaluate and after people losing family members and so forth, it's like for real though, having those, that short list, everything else is secondary. So Aaron, what, what about you? Yeah, I would definitely say uh, in continuation with that thought, you know perspective perspective and what doesn't break you makes you and in everything there's a silver lining but you put the silver lining there it depends on what you're looking for i have the deepest empathy for you know everyone that is lost of in in any way um but at the end of the day from raised by this beautiful woman here with education and exposure and the the idea to have a thought about things and to ha- and to look at it through a positive perspective, it's just meant that I've th- walking in that positive perspective and thinking that way as an optimist. It always proves to be the thing that 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 rises, that helps you to rise, that helps you to continue on. And my thing is, I'm at the point now where what other, what other option do I have? I could turn on the 24 hour news cycle, but I'd rather do what you're doing right now. I'd rather just talk about things and keep it lighthearted. Right. So what I've found is that in being positive, in looking at things in that way, being grateful, things like this make you more appreciative. And so I'm just a person who is already there. So during this time, it just continues in that flow. And then I try to take what I know and use that 
to help others to be optimistic and to turn off the news and to turn within <laughs> and to get through this thing. You know? <laughs> I, had, you know, I kind of, I, I think back in some of the great art that's been produced, modern, modern art. And I think of like the Obama poster, you know, with hope underneath his, uh, underneath it. You know, I guess, do you see the Black Lives Matter movement as being something that has spurned art and advocate art? Oh, right. Black Lives Matter and all these different things. What it actually has done first and foremost is highlighted the art that we've already had and has been there. It's actually made it more relevant. In some cases, this made people actually look at the art and finally see what the message was about right. because of the fact that it highlighted that. And then going forward, it made all expressions more relevant. People care more about the black experience at this point. And I have always said that the deepest key to empathy is people knowing other people's stories and just hearing them over and over and over. Because eventually, if there's gonna be empathy there, it's because there's a point of connection where a person says, wait a minute, all these other things I can relate to, but that part I can relate to, I can feel <gasps> like that to be, and then you have the moment of truth, if it's going to happen at all. So black art has, it is, I mean, the Black Lives Matter movement and all these other things, it's highlighted the art that's been there, the messages that have already been preserved by the scribes so that finally when the student is ready, the teacher was right there all along. And then it's inspired those of us to continue to say, yes, now we can finally, let's go. Now we can get our loving message, our caring, our unification message out. And this is, it's, it's I can only relate to this as a gay man. And and that is that these struggles are ongoing. You know, today they announced that Pete Buttigieg was going to be treasury secretary. Oh. And he got on TV and did this impassioned speech of which he happened to mention how he proposed to his husband in the middle of O'Hare airport. And that was something I could totally relate to. And the first thought that went through my head was, wow, this is something that everybody can totally relate to right and so it's right. that kind of thing yeah i think is what you're saying is when when you know all of a sudden it's like oh oh <laughs> the number it's one thing that, mm -hmm. and either bunk if bunker uh move you know how when she finally gets it right <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say this. I could not agree with that more. The thing that has been the, the, the most impactful to me when it comes to Black Lives Matter movement uh, is how many people are in the movement whose faces aren't black lives. Right. And that, that to me says progress. Again, right. it's, it's, it's nothing but the continual progress. It, the destination is the journey. And so I just say that just to conclude. Just to no, say, actually, I'm glad you said that because your mom and I talked about that. Remember, Cheryl, um, mm -hmm. I interviewed uh, a, a girl who does Black Lives Matter window murals, right. and she was concerned that people would feel like because she wasn't black that she was somehow uh, Empire. taking yeah. the message, you know, on. And But you think that it's a sign of progress. Uh, 100%. That, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, what about you, Cheryl? Because empathy has no color. Yeah, right. and see, it also... It tells us it, uh, the state of your heart, because what's in your heart's going to come out, right. because you know no other way, and it's how you were raised. That generation that raised you, however, they raised you, be it positive or negative, against another uh, group of people. Either you're going to be aware of how wrong it is. Because we are all a part of the human race. Right. Um, but however, the morals and values have to be there right. for human beings, whether you agree or not. Because, right. you know, we're not going to agree with one another on everything. Right, right, but right. It right. doesn't justify mistreating people. Right. So because you and I don't agree. So, Aaron, you told me about growing up with your mom, the teacher, and how yeah. she would point out things to learn about as you were going down the street. And it reminded me of my mom. When my mom and I would drive anywhere, she'd go, oh, that's a good photo. Oh, that's a good photo. So, oh, wow. yeah, and it was like, oh, my God, <laughs> you know. So how, okay. how was it growing up with this teacher? How did she 
help guide you your creative energies into the arts well exactly what you just said your mom did all your mother did was to just help you to notice she just brought your awareness to something um and my mother's full-time job was that and her full-time job as as my mother was that she made it her own duty like she even said in preparing for it so my mother was always inviting opportunities for me to look out and see things see perspectives you know um really all the way to the point where if i didn't know what a word was if i was you know uh, i had a question about a word she would tell me go look it up i would try to stop myself in the middle of sentences because i didn't want to go look it up and of course now to this day is the great it's the greatest thing ever but my mom is exposure 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 one more thing too my father even though he's not in this interview paired with that one thing he did when i was a kid and i just told him the other day that I, how grateful it was and that was that he would when we would when he would listen to classical music he would actually tell us stories and he would make up these stories to go along with it but we would think that the stories really pertain to it so what it did was it made us listen to the music not for instruments but for something else that's inviting into creativity that's inviting the imagination into that place and it also shows the individual all of us what else we can do and i should never hear that old cliche is not enough time in a day because this pandemic has shown you 24 hours worked since the beginning of time and we haven't been given any more and any less. And it can be done when you're shut down and you have no other choice and you found out, hey, yeah, I could have been doing this all along. Yeah, but we were so busy that we never think about looking to the right or left right. of yourself or anybody else. Then you can value other people's gifts and then it'll awaken up and say, hey, I used to do that. I'm gonna go back to doing that. So Baltimore is a hustle city. <laughs> People will find, I mean, like I said, the creativity of the kids and young adults trying to make it, and they do these little things. That's why the squeegee boys are in so much trouble, but they're I, trying to find their way, and they're doing I something. I love the squeegee boys. I do not understand this, like, backlash right. for the squeegee boys. All they're doing is trying to earn something. I have you. You'd rather for them to do that than to try to snatch your pocketbook. Yeah, I mean, just, just go ahead, Aaron. Man, I'm sorry. I, and I, I, this is <laughs> you. You have to go and do us and and in your series do a squeegee boy interview podcast. I promise you, because what it viral. Is, <laughs> so look for a podcast from the street corner. I have to find a good squeegee boy squeak street corner. Cause let me tell you, let me tell you, Mike. <clears throat> the first thing is you might get twenty whatever, but you will get twenty thousand, right. and those are the only ones that matter. Right. Right. Yes, I never like for me. Facebook is heaven. The reason right. why I never touch the news feed. I mind my right. own business and I just talk to my own people. Right. I have the ability. We have the ability to curate our own space. Right. So right. with that, yes, sir. From a perspective, right now the thing that's working in quarantine is people are actually open to hearing other people and they're listening. We're conversing, and the reason why is because we're all on the same level playing field. So we know us needs us to get through this. There's no such thing as superiority right now. Right. Right. Care. So that allows for something like this. And there is nobody that's addressing that niche. And so my my brain just lights up. I, <laughs> yeah. and if, if any, help right. you need from me, any help you need from me, even in ideas, because creative content strategy is that's who I am. I'm here. Well, one thing I'm looking The last thing I'll say for myself is that, you know, if anybody's interested in finding out more about me, you can literally just one phrase, you can type it in everywhere. Aaron Hill TV, just everywhere. Awesome. And you'll see me come up. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Aaron um, Hill TV, mom out, out in the park with her artwork around her. <laughs> Aaron and Cheryl are making a legacy together. It's a legacy of positivity and creativity of artwork being done right in the middle of a dark pandemic, of keeping a positive energy even when the light is hard to see at the end of the tunnel. But the light is there and they show us every single day between their artwork and the music that they create. 
On the next episode of the 743 Patterson Park podcast, we'll shift gears and we'll talk to Molly Miller. Molly is a local photographer who does families outside, right in the Baltimore City communities. She's an intuitive photographer and she has a project called the Front Porch Project that deals with capturing families during the COVID-19 pandemic. So please join me as we talk photography, art, and creativity with Molly Miller on the next episode. Meanwhile, have a great holiday, and we'll see you on the other side.